Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, I'm Sherman and in this video I'm going to teach you how you can concentrate on STEM and these are the strategies that I found from my personal experience. I'll be sharing with you four different strategies and not only that, the three principles that you must listen to and follow for these strategies to work for you, right? Let's jump right in. The first strategy is to remove distractions. First, you need to organize your own table. So, for example, I put the markers that I've used for my education videos for my channel inside a markers box and I put it elsewhere. And then I have my pencil and pens. I'll just put it in the stationery box at the corner. And then I have the earphones that I've used when listening to music and taking breaks. Let me put that aside. Now, once you're done with that, you need to organize your table. Just put your laptop, your phone, and everything in the right order. I'm not trying to be like OCD. I'm just trying to give you how you can organize your table. All right? Then, after you organize your table, the second thing to do is to only have what you need on the table. For example, you want to take notes. Then, you bring out your pens, all right? Look, look at the note-taking video on how to take notes. Link is up there. As well as your notebook. And of course, your school notes or any form of reference material to take notes from. The reason why you should only have what you need is first, it trains on your resourcefulness. You are able to use little resources, just a few pens, to create mind-blowing mind maps or mind-blowing ways of taking notes. And it actually helps to explore your creativity. And number two, it gives you focus because your phones, your laptops, annoying messages and notifications don't Screw you up once you're studying for your exams, all right? And it gives you focus on what you're studying on. Number two, I can't emphasize the importance of taking breaks. There are a couple of strategies through which people study. One is called the 25-5 principle, where you work for 25 minutes, you study for 25 minutes, and you take a five minutes break, and then you do it again and again and again. And of course, people don't do that, right? They just play for 25 minutes and then study for five minutes, which is absolutely ridiculous, but it happens. Or people even do the 45-15 minute, any cycle. Whatever you do, you have to take breaks. And the most important thing that you need to know when taking breaks is to step away from your study room. Now that you're done with that, what can you do? First, you can maybe read a certain book, but I don't think anyone will read a book because you are already freaking tired of reading your school notes, reading your reference materials again and again. So maybe, why not you discover your passion? Maybe you like to compose music, like using the keyboard out here or some digital audio workstation. Or maybe you like to dance or maybe you like to sing. Maybe you like to, you know, write journals. And if you don't want to do that, you can just do some simple meditation, just focus on your breathing. Or you could just sleep, just take a small nap for about 5 to 10 minutes and then begin studying again. You don't stress your brain to focus two or three hours without even taking a single break. Guys, your brain needs a break. So just give it a five to 10 minutes break. It's much more effective because your brain will come back with a powerful performance the next time you study. Then the third thing that you guys can do is meditation. Of course, if you search YouTube, there's a lot of videos on how to do meditation, certain so methods, certain so music or things to do. But if you're learning meditation, it's good to learn from a trained practitioner. And if you have not learned it from a trained practitioner, then the easiest way that everyone can do, right, including you, is to just sit at a place like this, just cross your legs like you do during a school assembly, close your eyes, and just focus on your breathing. Focus on your breathing. Just in and out. The biggest problem that you and me have to say no to meditating is that it's a waste of time, all right? The reason why you say that is because it's a low dopamine activity. What it means is that's not give immediate happiness like you listening to some favorite pop music or playing some games. So the reason why you do meditation in the morning is it gives you focus. For a prolonged period of time, you free your mind's thoughts and just focus on your breathing, just focus at a point. So that when you're studying, you're able to focus completely on studying and remove the distractions around you. Now, I know you will say this. All right, that's actually pretty easy. I honestly don't understand why people find meditation so difficult. Wait, wait am I thinking? Okay, that's right. I can't focus during meditation. I can't, I keep, thoughts keep coming to my mind and it just makes meditation so hard. 
Watch till the end of the video, I'll be explaining the three principles and then you will understand why. And finally, strategy number four is to change your environment. We humans, right, get bored of doing the same thing. For example, studying in your same room at your house forever. And it's boring because there's no change, right? You don't have any motivation. Then what can you guys do? Number one, you could go to a library and study. Of course, now it's COVID-19 time and you can't do it, you have to stay at home. But when the time comes, go to a library and study, okay? And there are two ways you can do that, okay? Very clear for you. Number one, you can study alone. There's nothing wrong with that because it gives you much more focus. Or you can study in group studies. And the idea of group studies is really, really, really popular. And it turns out it's not really group studies, it's just group chat, chat, and chat, and you don't end up studying. So how do you make those group study sessions really productive? First, don't go with your close friends. Go with friends or go with classmates who have knowledge in the topic that you are weak at. For example, you are weak in math, you can't do math calculation, and your classmate over there is getting a straight A's for math, and you're just like wondering how, then just ask him or her to go for a group study session together at the library. Not at home because it will create some unwanted tension, just go to the library and study. And ideally, if you have a certain strength, for example, you may be strong in language, and that guy is weak in language then you can teach him or her English. So it works both ways. And when that happens, that's the most effective and productive session. All right, here comes the most important part of the video. The three principles that you must obey for these strategies to work. And first, you have discipline. And I don't want to bore you guys because you have studied about discipline during your school assembly talks, your principals or your vice principals have talked about it again and again. So what did you do? is try out the strategy. Don't just think, wow, wow, this is like a super good idea. You just gain the knowledge of it, but you don't apply it in your real life, then what's the point of watching the video? Try applying just one strategy, okay? Which is actually my second point. One strategy. All I want from this video, for you guys, is to just stick to just one strategy and apply it before you move on. Don't apply all the strategies at once. Don't look at some random YouTube videos that tells you about so many strategies and you don't apply it and procrastinate and waste time. And once you're done with that, guys, the third is the most important point, which is consistency. Consistency means you do that strategy, you do that thing every single day. For example, meditation, you do it every single morning if you want to follow that strategy. Or maybe you want to take breaks, you did not consider taking breaks, C create a refreshing change to the environment. But do it every day. Not one day, not one day. Don't do it for just one day and think, oh, it's just magical, I did it, and you feel a sense of accomplishment. It's about progress, it's about consistency, doing it every day, more than just doing it one day. Thank you guys for watching this video, and if you believe this video helped you a lot, Please subscribe as well, share it with your friends. Thank you.